Hello Hard Video Audit stuff, welcome back, good buddies. Have you wanted to either start shooting time lapses but you're not sure how? Or are you already shooting them but you want to level up the quality and start crushing it? Either way, Harv's got your back. Thundering typhoons, so much can go wrong when you're creating time lapses more so than going out and shooting photos or video because you have that time factor. What I mean by that is the longer you're shooting, the more potential there is for things to go pear-shaped. You could run out of space on your memory card, you could run out of battery, a gust of wind could shake your camera, or a dog could run over and wee on your tripod leg. That didn't happen or anything, of course. I've been spending time, lots of time, uh, shooting time lapses recently, so here are my essential time lapse tips. Stay tuned for the next video where I show you how I compile your hundreds of photos into a epic looking time lapse movie. That's coming on this channel, watch this space. Many will argue with this, but for me, a time lapse is a series of photos that have been edited and compiled into a video. What it's not is video footage that has been sped up. I mean, technically, sped up video footage still is, but come on. This video is about leveling up your time lapses. Why wouldn't you shoot video and speed it up, I hear you ask? One, resolution and detail. Photos do just look sharper and more detailed than video, fact. Two, raw quality. Why would you shoot your time lapse in 8 bit video format when you can choose 14 bit raw? and use Adobe Lightroom to bring out the very best in every frame. Three, the control of motion blur you have when shooting photos is far greater than that in video, but I'll go into that later. On the flip side, people will still shoot video and speed it up because it's quick and convenient to set up, the file sizes are small and there's very little editing and post-processing to do, but they do just look a bit amateur, so if you want your time lapses to look the best they possibly can, Stop doing it. So what gear do you need to start shooting some ridiculous time lapses? Well, one, a camera, obviously. Almost any will do. I've seen some really stunning time lapses shot just on entry level Canon cameras. Two, a sturdy tripod. And unless you can guarantee that there's no wind and that kind of thing, your lightweight travel tripod might not be ideal. I always take my big man Frosso tripod with me uh, for time lapses. I'd rather just lug it to where I need to be rather than risk a lighter tripod and getting home to realise that the wind had been blowing it the whole time and my whole time that's been ruined. Three, a variable ND filter. Four, an intervalometer if your camera doesn't have a built-in time-lapse mode. Five, food and drink, which is a must for me because once you set up your time lapse and it's rolling, you can't really leave it alone to go and find a bite to eat unless you're somewhere relatively secure, like a hotel room, for example. Personally, I never use auto white balance. With changing weather, clouds going in front of the sun and that kind of thing, it can create very noticeable fluctuations in colour from frame to frame. Uh, I personally think you're best off letting the colour in your scene just naturally get warmer and cooler with the changes of light in your scene. On that note, I also recommend sticking your camera into manual mode. Just like with your white balance, if you let your camera make any kind of exposure decisions for you, it'll undoubtedly be jumping around all over the place from frame to frame, and it'll end up looking crazy. Slow that shutter speed down, and I mean way, way down. And why? Well, if you shoot your video at a 50th of a second and then speed up your footage, you'll be amplifying that natural motion blur. So if you speed up your footage by as little as four times, you'll get a time lapse with the choppy look of footage at 200th of a second. Not cool, bruh. Notice the choppy motion in this clip when our shutter speed is not slow enough. And then when we slow it down, the water becomes smoother and the people become more blurred as they're crossing the bridge. It's a matter of personal preference, of course, but personally, I much prefer the slower shutter speed example. For me, I find a shutter speed of around one second to be about right for the sort of time lapses I do, but experimenting with shutter speed is where you can get really creative. Of course, in daylight, you'll need to dial in your variable ND filter way up so that you can slow down your shutter speed, but at night, it's party time and you can fling your ND over a rainbow. 
get your shutters open for longer periods and watch the madness unfold. Planning ahead is critical when shooting time lapses, especially if you're going for the awesome looking day to night time lapse. The weather app on Apple devices tells you the exact time of sunrise and sunset, so you'll know exactly when to be there. And I like to aim for the sunset time to be around directly halfway through the time lapse. If you're driving to where you need to be to shoot your time lapse, it really pays to check the situation with parking, especially in my case, as I live in one of the biggest cities in the UK where parking can be tricky. If you can be in a situation where you can be set up near your car, You'll be in really good shape as your car provides warmth, shelter, entertainment and somewhere comfortable to be. And don't forget snacks and water because time flies when you're eating snacks, that really well known saying. <laughs> Merlin's beard, of course you should only shoot raw. If your camera has an inbuilt time lapse mode that compiles the frames in camera, it will definitely be JPEGs. So for Smeg's sake, don't use it. Get yourself an intervalometer, which will take the photos in intervals, shoot individual raw quality photos and compile them manually. The post-processing stage isn't too tricky, but stay tuned to my channel as I'll have a video that will cover exactly how to do this in my style. This clip is video that's been sped up and it looks okay. Apart from the choppy motion, it's sharp enough, there's enough detail. But when compared to a time lapse using photos that have been compiled, it's like night and day. It looks way more 3D and we have bags of detail. My last tip is to make sure you capture a short clip of audio from every location you shoot in. You won't need to use it every single time, but sometimes it can really add to the atmosphere of your clip. I use a Rode Video Micro because it's surprisingly good for a small, cheap mic that draws power from your camera, so it doesn't require a battery. Worth it. So here's your checklist of things that are easy to forget before you head out a full battery in your camera and bring spares. Personally, I use a small HD Focus, which takes big batteries and powers my camera. I use the monitor to set up the shot and then I turn it off to save power. Formatted memory card and spares for obvious reasons. A new battery in your intervalometer and some spares for obvious reasons. Step up and down rings for your filters, easy to forget. Sustenance in solid and liquid form. My magic combo is cashew nuts and water. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. As always, I've loved making this for you. And if you're still in the mood for more videos like this, I've made loads. And I'll pop a couple of interesting ones just here for you. And if you're not subscribed, definitely do it. Hit this blob just here. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better videos.